Well, rivalry was ugh, ugh, rival. How about those rivals, huh? Rivalry week delivered in all sorts of different ways, and let me tell you, things got shooken up a little bit, just a little bit, not too much, but just a little bit. When it comes to college football, when it comes to major college football, when it comes to the FBS, first things first, we have 83 teams that have qualified for a bowl game. One of them will get left out, unfortunately. That's going to be a tough fate for probably a group of five team from the MAC or the Conference USA, or yeah, maybe even the Mountain West, you know, who knows. But congrats to everybody that got bowl eligible today. So why don't we get started here? Because we got a lot to go over with week 13 of the college football season. Um, Ole Miss, yeah, this defense really proved that they were legit. They 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 were just they were just all over Willa Rogers the entire night. They they kept harassing him, they kept making they kept having the Bulldogs make these types of mistakes, you know, just critical mistakes all night long. You know, when, when everything went well. Matt Corral was efficient. The running game was efficient. Ole Miss, 10 wins for the first time ever. Going to either the Peach Bowl, it'll more than likely be the Peach Bowl. But, um, could be the Sugar. Could be the Sugar Bowl as well. Maybe. It'll more than likely be the peach, though, I think. And so, move on from a from a good game on Thursday into Friday. And my goodness, there were no ranked teams that got upset on Friday, but we got some things, you know, that looked very, very interesting for a while. And Boise State, San Diego State, started off pretty strong with Boise getting off to a really strong start. You know, Hank Bachmeyer and company were getting it were getting it done early. But Jordan Brookshire came into the game to the Aztecs and all bets were off. Second half, he lit it up in the second half. Huge drives by this Aztec offense. Huge defensive plays by this defense, including a beautiful interception early, you know. And the Aztecs won the West Division. And who won the Mountain Division? Utah State. So it's going to be a huge game in Carson next week. Utah State will take on San Diego State. Going to be thrilling. Iowa took on Nebraska in a game where the Cornhuskers dominated early. The quarterback came in for the Huskers, the Cornhuskers, and Logan Smothers. But then, you know, Iowa's defense decided to show up. And Tyler Tyler Goodson also showed up as well. Safety. Blocked punt. Huge, huge plays by this Iowa Hawkeyes defense. And that, combined with Goodson's running for like 156 yards or whatever, 19 points in that fourth quarter. They shut out Nebraska in the fourth quarter. They came back, and they had to wait. Iowa had to wait, and that's another terrible loss for Nebraska. Y'all know the statistics by now of Nebraska scoring exactly 239 points in Big Ten play and giving up 239. Crazy stuff. Nine losses by one possession. Or at least, eight, excuse me, eight losses by one possession. Nine by less than ten points. Crazy stuff that Scott Frost and company have to deal with. Like, this team really should be, like, this Nebraska team should be so much better than what they are. It's a damn shame. So how about Arkansas? They, they schooled Missouri. They, it seems like every time these two teams play, Arkansas just gets the better of them. Like, the Tigers didn't have a hundred passing yards on the day. They couldn't keep up with the Hogs in the second half. And when you got guys like Traylon Burks just schooling this Missouri defense, he had like seven catches for like 120 yards in the TD. Just, just 
just put about their misery right now. At least Missouri's going boldly, but you know, you got Dan Mullen fired, but you lost this game to Arkansas. Not a good way to lose. Not a good way to lose. They just they just got overwhelmed. So what about the number four team in the country? Cincinnati. A lot of people were worried about them. A lot of people were, you know, afraid that they might get upset. And, you know, they had three turnovers in this game. I'm not going to discredit that. They had three bad turnovers in this game. But with this defense, this defense, <laughs> this defense is unreal. Blocked three kicks. Took one of them back to the house. Making the critical plays that they need to. And this was after it was like 21 to 3, you know, early early on in the second quarter, you know, since he took a 21 to 3 lead. So East Carolina came back, tried to make it into something a little bit more respectable, but ultimately Cincinnati able to lock it up. They're hosting the AAC championship with the CFP berth on the line. They're hosting it. They're in it. They're still in the CFP hunt. I know, right? Crazy. And Colorado, remember how Colorado was playing Texas A&M early in the season? Yeah, they didn't play very well against Utah. Like, like, like this, like Pledger and Tavion Thomas were just efficient. Cam Rising, three TDs, efficient. Colorado had less than 150 yards of total offense. And Utah just took care of business just like that. They'll be facing somebody, but we'll talk about that somebody in a moment here. It won't be Washington State, although they did win the Apple Cup pretty handily. Um, North Carolina, NC State. Man, what a game this was. What a Friday night game this was. Like, the Wolfpack had the early lead, and this is similar to the Pitt game that North Carolina had. And when Sam Howe, who's basically been a dual threat this season... Came storm back with these running backs as well. You know, they took the lead. And then, all of a sudden, you think that North Carolina has this game wrapped up. But then Devin Leary throws a huge touchdown to Emeka Amezi. And then NC State somehow gets the onside. And then, he, and then Leary hooks up with Amezi again. And the defense, you know, they did just enough to hold off the Tar Heels one more time. And NC State, while they won't be going to the ACC championship game, you know, um, they, that was a value, that was a damn good effort, damn good game. Definitely a game of the night type deal there. I'll tell you that much. So, as we move into Saturday, Saturday slate was, Daunting, very, very much daunting. And why don't we talk about these blowouts first? Georgia, they finished 12 and 0. They shut out Georgia Tech. Crazy stuff right there. Like Georgia Tech, my goodness, you ain't scored no points. You gave up a hundred points, scored nothing the last two weeks. Wake Forest, hey. Dave Clawson then signed an extension. Good for him. He signed an extension. Wake Forest is going to the ACC championship game. They dominated Boston College as expected. Passing game on point. Hartman was on point. Everything was on point. Wake Forest taking on Pitt. It just gonna, it's going to be one of the most beautiful ACC championship games I think we've ever seen in our entire lives because there's no Clemson. There's no Florida State. The stands are going to be empty, I bet. It's going to be crazy. Um, and Houston, obviously, they took care of UConn. They were, they were up like 24-7. to and They won like 45-17 at one point. That was it for that. But Texas Tech, they, they, they really played Baylor tough. They really played Baylor very, very tough. And, I mean, they like Tech was trying to come back on them multiple times, but ultimately... We got some of that college kicker's magic in which Texas Tech's kicker missed the field goal. Missed it. And Baylor had to wait it out. They had to wait it out until tonight. So they had to wait all day to see what would happen in Bedlam. 
We'll talk about Bedlam once we get down the list here. And oh boy, number two versus number five, the big one, the game, Ohio State, Michigan. How did it go? It did not go as expected for Ohio State. I'll tell you that much right now. When you got this ground attack for Michigan, they couldn't even be contained. Hassan Haskins went for five touchdowns. Five of them. And the combination of Aiden Hutchinson and David Ojabo, they were all over C.J. Stroud. Don't let those stats fool you. Again, like I've been saying for weeks now, do not let the stats of C.J. Stroud fool you. Mans was getting pressured all day long. Mans could not do anything all day long. Yeah, yeah, yeah you know, the, the, these wide receivers like to show out for Ohio State, but that's about it. You know, 390-something yards by C.J. Stroud, but that doesn't impress me, does it? That doesn't impress a lot of people, does it? Because, I mean, Ohio State's defense got bullied, bullied by this O-line from Michigan. Like, they were getting knocked back in the snow. Yeah, this was a snow game. They got knocked back in the snow. They, they couldn't do anything. when Every time it seemed like, you know, Ohio State was able to try and get Michigan off the field, bam, the run game came right back, stormed right at Ohio State, and the Buckeyes just could never get the momentum back. Could never get the momentum back in their favor. And now Ohio State is eliminated. College football playoff contention. Yes, you guys are done. Two losses in FBS football in the state of college football playoff and things like that. That gets you finished. Two losses means you're done. So, adios Ohio State. See you next year. I, I don't think anybody predicted that Ohio State would be eliminated from CFB contention. I don't, I don't think anybody predicted that. In fact, you know, my all my predictions are completely wrong. Remember when I said, you know, that, you know, Georgia, Bama, Ohio State, maybe Clemson or Oklahoma would get to the playoffs this year? Yeah, that's that's not. Yeah, some of those aren't happening. We'll talk about the other one in a moment. So let's get to that 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 that, that um that slate at 3:30 because you know not a lot happened in the noon window, but a lot happened. In the later windows. So in betwixt, in betwixt the noon window and the 3.30 window, my alma mater, UNT. Oh, yes, you already know. UNT is bowl eligible, baby. DeAndre Torrey, I don't know where this UNT team has been, you know, all season. They completely turned around. They were 1-6. They've won five straight. They beat the brakes off of UTSA. They beat the brakes off of DeAndre Torrey. Three touchdowns. Akaika Ragsdale added two more. I hope I'm saying that name correctly. I'm probably not. Mean Green. How about it? You did it. Bowl eligibility ruins UTSA's undefeated season. UTSA likely going to the Independence Bowl anyway, but... It feels good. It feels good, doesn't it? it? Feels good. I don't think this UNT team will be the one left out in the cold. I think that'll be like a Mac school or something like that. Because that's a huge one. You can't, you can't leave a team with a win like that out in the cold. Huge, huge upset in college football. UTSA, again, nobody really buyed UTSA being even ranked at all you know I, I haven't been buying it for the past few weeks you know I, I thought it was good a couple weeks ago when they beat up on UTEP but not anymore because they were getting by they were getting by in these close games that they shouldn't have been you know having close games with and it is what it is shameful shameful at least UTSA can still win a conference championship Maybe go to a bowl game, a big time bowl. Well, actually, no. It'll probably be the Independence Bowl, like I just said. So, it is what it is there. And another game took place in the snow. Penn State, Michigan State. In the snow, these Spartans of Michigan State, they were injured. All around, they, like, there were injuries, there were flu problems. But, when this defense stepped up, they stepped up. You know, Kenneth Walker did his thing, 130-something yards, a touchdown, Peyton Thorne, 
had a couple TDs himself. And, I mean, there was just injuries, illness, all sorts of stuff all over this team. You know, Sean Clifford and Jahan Dotson, they had their best efforts in this game. But then you get to Penn State's play call. And there was some weird play calls by Penn State once again in this game that doomed them. And I swear, this is like the fifth game out of like the last seven that Penn State has lost. I, I, I genuinely don't know why they signed Franklin to the extension now. If, if this is the type of results we're seeing on the field. So Penn State should have been able to win this game somehow. They really should have. But yet they didn't. Critical mistakes, once again. Doom Penn State. It's a damn shame. It really is a damn shame. Michigan State's likely locked themselves up a big time bowl game. It's a New Year's Six bowl game, I think. Will be in the cards for them. So good for them. Beyond good for them. Alabama, they struggled again. They struggled again against Auburn. You know, if it weren't for that late Bryce Young TD pass, because Alabama only had three points up until late in this game. And what was surprised to me is that we got the first Iron Bowl to go to overtime. Crazy stuff. And we went to four overtime, so... Auburn did not make the two-point play that they needed to make. Bama did. So Bama, they're still in this thing. They still are one of the six teams remaining in this thing. So, you know, all you got to do, Bama, next week is somehow beat the juggernaut that is Georgia. You will get in. You will get in if you beat Georgia. So it is what it is there. Oregon State and Oregon, the Civil War. It wasn't so much of a war, it was more so a beating for most of this game. Ducks made a statement in this game. They, 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 they really pushed back, you know, they really pushed back after what happened to them against Utah. And now they get to face Utah again. Like, again, you know, Oregon went up 24-3 to at the half. And again, although the score was a little bit closer than it appeared, you know, a lot of garbage time points by the Beavers in the fourth quarter. Oregon bustled their way into a huge victory. They needed this type of victory to bounce back after what happened last week. And I think they really proved themselves again here. So Oregon's got 10 wins on the season. They could pick up win number 11 if they are able to beat Utah this time. Can they do it? We'll find out. We'll talk about all the big games in the conference championships next week. So, or rather, later on this week. Excuse me. It's Sunday now. So, you know, it is what it is. Um, Wisconsin, Minnesota, Minnesota. They they found out. You know, by the time the day started, that they weren't going to the Big Ten championships. So, they said we're going to deny Wisconsin the chance to, and. My goodness, Wisconsin reverted back to the Wisconsin of early in the season because they couldn't get the ball rolling. They, 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 they never were able to get anything going. They didn't even have an offensive touchdown. They missed a field goal that was just it. It was terrible. A missed doink, you know, just unable to get any opportunities, you know, going to the point to where it was just like wow. This is the Wisconsin team that they said was going to the Big Ten Championship that was going to muscle their way to the Big Ten Championship. And it just did not happen. Graham Mertz played terrible. Tanner Morgan played terrible. But ultimately, Minnesota got just enough offense, just enough to take down the Badgers. Put them away. So now it will be Iowa. Tended to Iowa. 10-2 Iowa with literally no offense going into the Big Ten Championship against Michigan. Insanity. Insanity right there. Crazy stuff. Then we move into the later games here because uh, I, I'm just as shocked as you are because guess what? A&M is 8-4 again! Woo! How many times is that now? That's like that, that's got to be another, that's got to be something that's, you know, an always 
guarantee A&M going 8-4. Max Johnson with a late touchdown pass to Dre Jenkins. You know, Tigers, bowl eligible. You're not going to have Ed Ogeron as the coach, but it's a damn good way to send them out by winning this game. Because, I mean, the Tigers dominated this game for most of it. I mean, A&M didn't even have 300 yards, I think. You know, there was a late surge, though, but that late surge proved to be nothing significant because, once again, A&M, you can count on A&M to go 8-4. Jimbo. Oh, they paid y'all. Oh, they paid that man too much. They paid Jimbo way too much. Like, uh, I'm really happy about this result right here. Really happy about this result as a Texas fan. Really happy about that. Take that, A&M. Take that. I don't know where A&M's going bowling, but it's probably not going to be somewhere pretty. And then Bedlam. Oh, just another reason to make me happy. Just another reason. Bedlam was crazy. Beyond crazy. What a game this was in which... It was back and forth in the first half. You know, you got Brennan Presley with a huge kickoff return for a TD. You got Caleb Williams throwing for three touchdowns. You got Spencer Sanders making big plays, you know, as well. But the, the third quarter started. The third quarter started, and I don't know what in the world was wrong with the Cowboys in the third quarter. Safety. Muffed punt that Oklahoma was able to, you know, get in for a touchdown. Just a horrid sequence of plays by Oklahoma State, but they were able to rally around Spencer Sanders. And then, you know, Oklahoma decided to join the muffed punt party as well. And that allowed and that allowed Jalen Warren to capitalize. And along with that huge touchdown run from Spencer Sanders, Oklahoma State was in prime position. Oklahoma had you know, one more huge drive that they they could, you know, potentially win this game, but ultimately the, this defense, they were able to stop Caleb Williams just in time, and I don't know what's wrong with Caleb Williams. Man's, man's is either slippery as a fox or, or just inaccurate as hell, because, man, there were some throws tonight by Caleb Williams that were just not good. There was some, there was some plays tonight that were just not good by both these teams. It was... It was Bedlam. It was pure madness. It was craziness. I loved every second of it. And Oklahoma, guess what? You get to join Ohio State. You guys are eliminated from CFP contention. Congratulations! Yes! Beautiful. Oklahoma's probably going to the Sugar Bowl, though. But congratulations! Mmm. Good stuff. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. I am loving that. So... You know, Bedlam delivered. So Oklahoma State, you guys get to take on Baylor, who waited all day just to see that crazy game. And then, you know, we got a couple others here. Um, Clemson, they shut out South Carolina. They're not going to the ACC championship because of what NC State did. Um, and then, obviously, Wake Forest won as well. Pitt, Kenny Pickett. Four TDs. Syracuse is not good. <laughs> Syracuse ends up five and seven. They're missing. They're, they're not going bowling. I'm worried my Longhorns aren't going bowling either, but, you know, Syracuse, you had the opportunity, and you just didn't. Just couldn't stop Kenny Pickett. Just couldn't stop him. Four TDs for that man. Four huge TDs. It's a damn shame for Syracuse. And then Notre Dame. Oh, boy. Notre Dame. They are creeping back in there. They are they are ready. They are hungry. They're itching much, much closer to the college football playoff. Defense has been tenacious this year since, you know, the Cincinnati game. Defense been tenacious. Offense making big plays again. They whooped up on Stanford to finish off the season. So, Notre Dame is still in this thing at the air. <laughs> this is going to be a crazy conference championship weekend, I can guarantee you that. And last but not least, um, the game that just finished up like, uh, I don't know, like 20 minutes ago. Almost 30 now. From my estimation, BYU-USC, the last edition of Pac-12 at the dark that will all be 
you know, unless you're a sicko, you know, because Cal USC is next week, but I'm not going to talk about Cal or USC next week. But I'll talk about USC now. Jackson Dart and company, they played really, really well. But really, really well isn't really, really great. And the Cougs had injuries. The Cougs did not play great on defense. But yet somehow, a huge fourth down stop late. That's BYU being undefeated against the Pac-12. Unfortunately for BYU, though, the Independence Bowl is probably going to be their destination. You know, there's just not enough. There's not enough teams, you know, I don't think that can move down to where it's like, yeah, we can get you a spot in the New Year's Six. I think the Independence Bowl will be the likely destination. I'm probably not going to preview the Independence Bowl now just because, you know, BYU lost this game. Or rather, UTSA, not BYU. BYU basically lost this game by playing pretty badly. They need to, they lucky, luckily, they have a couple weeks off, you know, before they can before their bowl game. You know, so BYU could rest up, get it all together. So, and the other conference championships are set as well. So, UTSA found out they'll be taking on Western Kentucky, and we'll be talking about Western Kentucky. We'll be talking about all the conference championships next week. Oh boy, this is going to be one thrilling thrilling weekend of college football next week. Oh boy. One more round before, you know, the um, before the bowls begin and before, you know, wind down for the season, which I'm going to be really, really sad about. I'm going to be definitely really sad that we get the wind down here on the channel talking about college football until next August. Well, uh, late next August, excuse me, so... Man, I can't wait. So, next week, Friday night, West Kentucky will take on UTSA. Oregon will take on Utah. Saturday in the noon window, you got Baylor, Oklahoma State. You got Kent State, Northern Illinois in the MAC. Um, and in the, the in the afternoon window, oh yes, big afternoon window. San Diego State, likely still ranked, taking on Utah State, App State, Louisiana. I'm, Pretty sure one of those teams should be ranked. So they might get ranked next week. Of course, you got Georgia, Alabama. That's going to be very important. Houston, Cincinnati is going to be very, very important. I'm going to throw a bone to the SWAC and put put this game as very important as well, even though it's probably not. Prairie View A&M just lost today, again, to Mississippi Valley State, which I'm surprised at as well. Take it on. Jackson State undefeated at FCS. Yeah, that Jackson State. Led by that man, Deion Sanders. Yeah, that man. And then late window, you got the ACC Championship, which is going to be just sick. It's going to be beautiful. The Again, I think this is going to be one of the most beautiful games of the season. Wake Forest, Pitt, Peach Bowl, baby, for one of these two teams. And then Michigan, Iowa, of course. The Big Ten Championship. Huge, huge week for these 20 teams next week. Yeah. And, and the FCS, of course, the, so that makes 22. So, yeah. So, 11, 11 conference championships next week, 8 FCS second round games to preview next week. I cannot wait. That's 19 games. I, again, I, I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm beyond excited for all this. I'm excited, you know, to tell you all again. We will be previewing the Army Navy game along with the FCS quarterfinals. They'll, they'll, those will be together in one video again. And um, if things pan out the way they pan out, it will be the Celebration Bowl, the FCS semifinals, the Independence, and LA Bowl in one video as well for a preview and recap so previews and recaps for the next two weeks after conference championships of course so that, that that's just want to let y'all know that now and I will see you all again late Monday night to talk the NFL because boy oh boy do I need to get Thanksgiving stuffing out of my system I didn't have any stuffing but I'm stuffed with the knowledge of
bad, bad games. That's what I'm stuffed with the knowledge with, and I'm sure Sunday might be even crazier. Good night, everybody. I'll see you soon.